UAE Free Zones and Crypto Licensing. So I had some really nice notes that I typed up yesterday, and of course they got entirely nuked. So I'm going to do this off the top of my head, but I think I know this topic, so it should go okay. Let me do a fast straw poll of the audience. Raise your hand if you live in Dubai now or you're a resident now. Interesting. Okay, raise your hand if you're thinking of moving here. Good. Good. Now, either way, whether you're here now or whether you're thinking about moving here, let me know whether you're interested in establishing or have established a free zone company. Raise your hand if you have. I have. Okay, well, the whole premise here of this talk is why do we have free zones and what can they do for you in terms of starting a crypto or blockchain business? What, what, what do they allow you to do, a free zone company that you can't do elsewhere? So I find a good structure for understanding this is you have to get into a little bit of politics and history and then it all gets clear, right? There's a reason why everyone is flocking to the UAE to set up their companies. Now, as Olga mentioned, yes, the traditional benefit of free zone companies is that you do not have to pay tax. You don't have to pay corporate income tax. I, I don't know if you're all aware of this, but the UAE, where we are, just announced that because of some issues it's running into that it's going to start implementing a 9% corporate income tax. However, with some exceptions, that does not apply to free zone companies. Okay, so UAE is still a tax haven of sorts if you set up your company in a free zone and not on what's called the mainland. Right, so that, that attraction mostly still remains subject to a, little, a couple caveats. But there's so many free zones in the UAE. What do you do with them and where do you set up and how do you get your license? Well, the answer is changing every day, and the answer is not always clear. In fact, the answer is evolving. But under, understand the following, because I think it's helpful. Okay? The UAE is not a highly centralized country. It's not like, say, France or Russia or China, where you have a central government that's very strong and basically just provinces that make up that country. It is, in my mind, very similar to Switzerland. Okay? The UAE, where we are right now, is similar to Switzerland in the sense that it's not it's more of a federation of territories, even maybe a confederation. So these individual emirates that make up the UAE are very powerful, just like the cantons that make up Switzerland are very powerful. Yes, you have a central government, you have it, and it does play an important role with military and economy and diplomacy, but these are almost like, these emirates are almost like quasi-independent states within an overall government. Okay, so that allows a lot of local innovation when it comes to crypto regulation. So understand that there's two tiers, even maybe three tiers of regulation, and if you parse through this, you can figure out what's going on. Now in the UAE, there's a constitution and there's federal law that applies to everyone. From your perspective as an outside entrepreneur or investor, the two key areas of law that you care about are company law and financial law, right? Now, if you're moving here, you may care about family law, you may care about real estate law, because it's very interesting here. All right? But from an investor perspective, you care about those two areas of law, company law and financial law. I'll give you the definition of a free zone that I don't think almost anyone else does. Okay? A free zone is a government-licensed, government-sponsored, geographical space. Okay? It has to actually exist on the ground and have a geographical area where companies that are established within that space get certain exceptions to the default rules. Okay. Now, what are the default rules? In the UAE, the default rules are that you have a company law and a financial law that is written in Arabic, that's handled by courts that are very good, but they operate in Arabic, okay? and their law is sort of a Middle Eastern construct that draws from many sources, including Islamic jurisprudence, and outside sources. So it's, it's a perfectly valid set of law, but it's not what necessarily institutional international investors are looking for. What international investors are looking for, basically, is English company law and English financial law. That's what attracts them, okay? They want jurisdictions where they have, global, you know, where there's the law and their courts and the systems are standardized on sort of the English model. And by English, I mean England, US, and sort of the continental Europe all went to the same sort of standardized legal system. So what do you do if the UAE 
doesn't necessarily fall into that category, but it wants to attract all these people. Well, free zones, in addition to being tax exempt, also have regulatory carve outs, like I just said. It's written into the UAE Constitution. Different free zones may, may set aside the default law that applies in the UAE to companies and make their own company law. And they can interpret the effect of those laws in their own free zone courts. Right? So they're almost, these free zones are almost like islands in a sea of something different. On these islands, the rules do not apply, or rather different rules apply. These islands, these little free zones can have their own different company law. So you can set up your shareholder arrangements however you want. You can set up your buyout provisions however you want. You can set up your directors however you want, so long as it complies with the general worldwide accepted standard of English slash American law for dealing with corporations and entities. Now, distinguish in your mind between company law and financial law. Okay, financial law is what most people care about or a lot of people care about if they're involved in crypto. It's the idea of issuing tokens. It's the idea of holding customer funds. It's the idea of issuing or managing securities or something that might be a security. Right? That, that's, that's where you have opportunity and also where you can run into trouble, obviously, because issuing securities is a whole different ball of wax than issuing an NFT about an ape. Okay? Not every free zone can make its own financial law. Okay. In the Constitution of the UAE, only two free zones are allowed to do that in the entire country. Right? So if you want to work with securities or financial instruments, only two free zones allow you to do that. If you don't operate in those free zones, you have to use the default Emirates financial law, which is not really what you're trying to do if you're trying to issue crypto. The two free zones are Abu Dhabi Global Markets, ADGM, obviously in Abu Dhabi, okay, and the Dubai International Financial Center, DIFC, obviously in Dubai. Okay, by law, those are the only two free zones that not only have their own company law, but can have their own financial law. Not only that, they have within them their own financial regulator. The DIFC has its own financial regulator, and the ADGM has its own financial regulator. And that regulator is the entity, the authority, if you like, that you work with when you're issuing crypto, when you're dealing with crypto-based financial tools, and it's very effective and very useful. Right. So, any questions so far? Do I got it? All right, so I want you to imagine in your mind there's a top layer of regulatory authority in the UAE. It's the SCA, it's the Securities and Commodities Authority. Okay, SCA, or sometimes called ESCA, is a regulator for securities and commodities in, UA, in the UAE. You would think that that rule or that law would dominate everywhere, but remember, the Emirates have a lot of independent authority, so they can set up their own law, okay? The free zones, are we running out? Oh, okay. no, no, the okay. free zones have partial exceptions or have partial liberties under ESCA to set up their own financial law if it's a DIFC or ADGM. Now, making life really complicated, Dubai, almost like a quasi-independent state, has set up its own internal regulator. Okay, it's VARA, Virtual Asset Regulatory Authority, VARA. Okay, and VARA supposedly has issued regulations that apply to all of Dubai, not just in the free zones. All right, it's still evolving, it's still not entirely clear, but it's interesting because for the first time ever, we have a potential non-free zone application of new crypto law. In other words, all, it may apply to all of Dubai, not just DIFC and not just certain free zones. Okay? They came up with their new law last year. They came up with some regulations that applied that new law this year. And let's say it's a good first step, but there's a lot of uncertainty still remaining. Okay? So if you're trying to set up a crypto or blockchain problem, uh, problem <laughs> project in the Emirates, if it's not financially based, you can generally shop around to different free zones and see which one looks best. If it is, has a financial component to it, you want DIFC or ADGM. And when you're applying for the license, you're gonna be working with the internal regulator of that free zone and also communicating with VARA. And once both sign off, you can get your project launched. And that is a very short version of a two hour talk. If you want the two hour talk, let me know. 
Okay, clap. Go. Hey guys, Thank you.